Around 5,000 people have climbed to the highest point on our planet, but only a few brave souls have managed to reach the deepest. No matter how harsh the conditions on the summit of Mount Everest, nothing compares to what awaits you at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. Here, eternal darkness reigns. Metal bends under the pressure, and jets of liquid sulfur erupt from underwater geysers. We will talk about the people who dared to venture into this nightmare a bit later. For now, let's see what path one must take to dive to a record depth. 40 meters is the maximum diving depth for pearl divers and amateur scuba divers. From 0 to 200 meters is the habitat for 90% of all life in the ocean. At this depth, light still penetrates through the water, creating conditions for the growth of phytoplankton. The extensive biomass serves as food for a wide variety of small crustaceans, which in turn are food for fish. 332 meters is the record depth for scuba diving. At depths from 200 to 1000 meters, the twilight zone begins. Less than 1% of sunlight penetrates here. However, the inhabitants of this zone have learned to produce their own light. They use bioluminescent chemical reactions to attract prey or scare off predators. 565 meters is the maximum diving depth for the emperor penguin. Due to the absence of photosynthesis at such depths, nothing grows here, but fish can still be found. Many of them dive to this depth to hide from predators. At 1000 meters, sunlight no longer reaches. 1027 meters is the record depth for a military submarine. Up to a depth of 1000 meters, siphonophores can be found. These are the closest relatives of jellyfish. They live in colonies, clinging around a long tube that serves as their unified digestive system. When an unsuspecting fish, attracted by the bright light, swims too close, the siphonophore releases poisonous needles, and the victim becomes a meal for the entire colony. At depths greater than a kilometer, the midnight zone begins. This is a place of complete darkness. Food is scarce here, and deep-sea creatures must conserve energy. Most of the living beings do not hunt but lazily drift, gathering marine snow that settles from the surface microparticles from the remains of dead fish, plants, feces, dust, and sand. At 2,200 meters, giant squids live here, often engaging in titanic battles with sperm whales that dive to such depths. At 4,500 meters, you can encounter the anglerfish. For its prey, the luminous lure resembles a juicy, fat worm, but in reality, it is a bioluminescent bacterium living inside an appendage on the anglerfish's body. At 6,100 meters, internet cables are laid across the ocean floor. Over 99% of the ocean reaches a depth of 6,000 meters. To go deeper, one must look for cracks in the tectonic plates. Colliding with each other, they form underwater volcanoes, plateaus, and trenches. This is how the Mariana Trench was formed. It stretches south of Japan, running 2,550 kilometers in length and 60 kilometers in width, resembling a crescent moon in shape. This place is one of the most unexplored on our planet. We know incomparably more about the surface of Mars than about the Mariana Trench. At such a depth, the pressure can turn any living organism from the surface into a bloody mist in a microsecond. For an unprotected human, it would be like being under a 500-ton stone slab. The bottom of the Mariana Trench is dotted with geysers that spew liquid sulfur and carbon dioxide. For surface organisms, these chemical compounds are deadly, but for some deep-sea inhabitants, they are essential for survival. The fact that the Mariana Trench is the deepest became known in 1875 during the expedition of the ship Challenger. The technology then did not allow for a complete measurement of the depth, but the team managed to record a maximum figure of 8,184 meters. More accurate data were obtained only 76 years later. The crew of another British ship, the Challenger, using a sonar, discovered a fissure at the bottom of the Mariana Trench with a depth of 10,994 meters. It was then that the deepest point in the ocean was named the Challenger Deep in honor of both ships. The deepest dwelling fish living in the Mariana Trench was discovered quite recently. In 2014, a group of scientists from the Hadeep Ecosystem Study discovered a new species of sea snailfish capable of living at depths exceeding 8,000 meters. Pale with an eel-like tail and lacking scales, they appear fragile and entirely incapable of withstanding the immense pressure. Their survival is aided by the unique structure of their cells. Extreme cold and high pressure cause the fats in cell membranes to solidify like butter in a freezer, explains Jeffrey Drajan, the leader of the expedition into the Mariana Trench. Deep-sea creatures are forced to adapt their membranes to remain liquid, so their cells are filled with a large amount of unsaturated fats. Apart from the Mariana snailfish, there are no other predators at such depths, allowing it to enjoy the absence of competition. However, even this unique fish is unlikely to descend to the very bottom of the Challenger Deep. 
It turns out that methane and liquid sulfur emissions serve as suitable energy sources for microorganisms. Occasionally, the carcass of a dead whale sinks to the bottom, providing a feast for all deep-sea inhabitants, which can last for months. The Mariana Trench also interests geologists. At its bottom, scientists discovered an underwater lake of boiling sulfur. Similar lakes are found on Jupiter's moon Io. The first people to reach the bottom of the Mariana Trench were scientists Jacques Picard and U.S. Navy Lieutenant Don Walsh. Their goal was to test a new underwater vessel under extreme conditions. On January 23, 1960, aboard the Bathyscaphe Trieste, Jacques Picard and U.S. Navy Lieutenant Don Walsh began their descent, which lasted nearly five hours. They couldn't conduct research since there was no scientific equipment on board. They couldn't even take photographs. Upon reaching the bottom, Trieste stirred up so much silt that nothing could be seen through the window. However, Picard and Walsh returned with an important discovery, there is indeed life at a depth of 11 kilometers. Jacques Picard claimed to have seen a flatfish in the Challenger Deep. Modern scientists dismissed this possibility, believing it was actually a sea cucumber. Another significant discovery was made. Picard disproved the widespread belief at the time that there was no upward movement of water at great depths. Because of this misconception, nuclear powers had considered the Mariana Trench an ideal dumping ground for radioactive waste. Fortunately, thanks to these two researchers, the Pacific Ocean was spared from radioactive contamination. The descent of the vessel took five hours, but Picard and Walsh spent only 20 minutes at the bottom. During this time, the immense pressure caused battery failure, damaged the sonar, and disabled several engines, while a crack appeared in one of the portholes. The researchers planned to return to the Challenger Deep for further study, but due to the high risk to the crew's lives, the U.S. Navy limited Trieste's diving depth to 6,000 meters. It took half a century for humans to make another attempt. This initiative was led by film director James Cameron, known for movies like Titanic and Avatar. Cameron was not new to deep-sea diving, he had dived during the filming of The Abyss and participated in expeditions to the wreck of the Titanic and the remains of the battleship Bismarck. Virtually everything on the Earth's surface has already been explored, and in space, humans are sent only into orbit, while machines are sent to other planets. The joy of discovery remains in one place in the depths of the ocean. Only 3% have been explored, so many discoveries still lie ahead, James Cameron explained. In the 2000s, there wasn't a single submersible in the world capable of withstanding the pressure at a depth of 11 kilometers, so Cameron and his team had to build one themselves. The creation of the Challenger Deep took over seven years. The miniature bathyscaphe, barely large enough to fit one person, became one of the most complex underwater vessels in history. On board, 180 systems were managed by three copper cameras, life support systems, communication devices, and a hydraulic arm for collecting soil samples. The vessel resembled a vertical torpedo, an ideal shape for rapid descent. Inside was a sphere made of a thick layer of metal from which Cameron piloted the bathyscaphe. To witness the dive, the director invited Don Walsh, the only living person who had been to the bottom of the Mariana Trench. Do you have any advice if I hear a crack at 5 kilometers depth? James asked. If you hear it and you're still alive, you can keep diving. The one that kills you, you won't hear, Don reassured him. James Cameron's journey to the Challenger Deep took place on March 26, 2012. The director managed to shoot a large amount of material, which later formed the basis of the documentary film Deep Sea Challenge 3D. Not everything went as planned. Cameron intended to spend seven hours at the bottom, but due to engine failure, he had to limit it to three. James sat in a semi-crouched position, as the sphere's diameter was just over a meter. I felt completely isolated from the rest of humanity, as if I had landed on another planet. It's an absolutely empty, lifeless place, Cameron recalled. The Hollywood director didn't encounter any signs of life at the bottom. At the landing point of the bathyscaphe, the seabed appeared flat and barren. However, in the soil samples James brought back from the Mariana Trench, many previously unstudied microorganisms were discovered. For seven years after Cameron's journey, the Challenger Deep remained undisturbed. Expeditions resumed only in 2019, and since then, ten more people have visited the bottom of the Mariana Trench. All of them descended using the submersible limiting factor, designed by businessman and explorer Victor Vescovo specifically for extreme depth dives. Victor and his submersible hold several records. He became the first person to repeatedly dive to the bottom of the Mariana Trench and the first to visit the deepest points of all four oceans. Victor also set the record for the deepest man dive. The latest team to descend into the Challenger Deep were Chinese scientists aboard the submersible Fendus. 
On November 10, 2020, they conducted a live broadcast from the ocean floor, shown on Beijing's CCTV channel, allowing viewers to feel like underwater explorers. Despite being one of the most poorly studied places on the planet, significant progress has been made in recent years in exploring the Mariana Trench. Each expedition into the abyss provides new answers and introduces previously unknown deep-sea inhabitants. However, the most isolated place on Earth has not escaped the influence of human civilization. Underwater researchers found plastic bags and candy wrappers on the trench floor. Pollution traces are also present in microorganisms. Understanding how these organisms survive in extreme conditions can be useful in biomedicine and other fields. It is believed that deep-sea hydrothermal vents might have been the birthplace of the first living organisms on the planet. Therefore, bacteria at the bottom of the Mariana Trench could shed light on one of the most important questions, how did life begin in the universe? That's all for now. Share your thoughts about the heroes of this episode in the comments. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and see you next time.